Hey, I want to welcome you to today's program on Real Life, and we have with us uh, an absolute dear friend. In fact, um, uh, one of my very favorite people in all of the world. This man is encouragement to me. Uh, he's a man that I gladly uh, make myself accountable to. He's a true uh, lover of God, and the Lord has called him to a unique part uh, in our American culture. And I'm talking about Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council in Washington, D.C. And I hope you enjoy this edition of Real Life. And remember always that it's our hope that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. It's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you'll know real life. And to help you discover what that truly means, download our free app and you'll have immediate access to the real life television broadcasts, the daily real radio podcasts with Pastor Jack's teachings, words to the wise daily devotions, access to social connections with Pastor Jack through Facebook and YouTube, tools and resources to grow in Christ, and much more. Download the app today for all your mobile devices. Go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org for more information. Politics and Faith. Jack Hibbs, in his five-part DVD series, will help us understand how we as Christians should view the subject of politics in the light of our faith. What are the core issues that should define our worldview? Our support of Israel, protecting the unborn, traditional marriage. It's time to think these things through. Christians have long understood it's not enough to stand on the sidelines, leaving the direction of this great nation to those who would lead it astray. Our heritage demands that we be involved. Order the DVD set, Politics and Faith. For a gift of any amount to the ongoing ministry of Real Life, we'll send you this DVD set for free. Go online to reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346 or write P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Well, Tony, it's great to have you on the program today. And um, this this program, Real Life with us, is different than the other ones because we, we tend to have things scripted out a little bit. We kind of know where we're going and I deliberately did not want to do that with you because I want to just go through some issues that I know because I know you and I know Family Research Council, what is very hot on our hearts as Americans, as Christians, as those who care for this country. And so um, in this segment of our program together, I, I want to talk to you about what you see, what we see is happening in America, happening with our freedoms, happening with the culture that if I had to sum it up, it would be uh, lawlessness. Uh, what do you sense? What do you feel about uh, the very uh, core of what's happening in the United States right now? Well, Pastor Jack, I think you're absolutely right. Lawlessness encapsulates a lot of what we're seeing around the country. I mean, we, we've got an administration that kind of picks and chooses what laws they're going to abide by and enforce. I mean, we, we just had the Attorney General not too long ago speak to the state Attorney Generals and say, hey, when it comes to marriage, if you don't think those marriage laws are constitutional, don't enforce them. Uh, don't defend them. I mean, that is the height of lawlessness right. because these attorney, state attorney generals, they swear an oath to the Constitution that they will uphold it. And here they are, in many cases, actually working to undermine this. But now, we shouldn't be surprised by this right. because we're, we're told as Christians, that is, you know, Jesus said, watch for these signs. And of course, we also know that a part of that is lawlessness that begins to creep in. And we're seeing that across our society. But there's a problem with that, and I think we've got to be very, very careful that as Christians because lawlessness brings a lack of respect for government. Absolutely. And it begins to break down, because I, I'm hearing this, what, what, you hear, what you hear is people say, you know what, I don't trust government, I don't respect government, therefore I'm not going to do A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. And so we, we see a move toward anarchy, uh, which leads then to tyranny. And so it's, it's, it's very troubling. It's not just what we see today, it's what this leads to tomorrow. Well, Tony, I mentioned um, the word core and about what's happening in America, and you just absolutely hit that. And let's kind of go back a bit. The Bible makes it very clear. In fact, you don't have to be a believer to understand this truth, because it's a scientific truth, that whatever you sow into the ground, you're going to reap. It's mm -hmm. going to come back. Right. And every farmer knows that. Everybody who cares about a garden knows that. Isn't it true that the reason why we have those in power today that are abusing 
the Constitution, it's really because they've been brought up in an educational system that has indoctrinated them to, to um, not know history, not know our roots, not know or be educated about the very foundational truths that made this nation great. And so when you cut loose from that core, uh, then anything's possible. And, and you're saying that anarchy really is, is the reaping of us not sowing to our biblical Judeo-Christian roots, would you say? Absolutely. Uh, you know, John Adams said that our government is made for a moral and a religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government right. of any other. And so our founders understood that, yes, this framework of government works, this constitution and this framework will succeed in moving this nation forward if you have a people mm. that are self-governed according to some to the transcendent truths that we see reflected in Judeo the Judeo-Christian tradition and in the Bible. What's important, yeah. I, wanna, I wanna just mention this about the Constitution. Why all the fuss about the Constitution? It's an antiquated document, it's old. You know, it's amazing to me that people are, you know, these uh, judges are now going in there finding in the Constitution, uh, you know, a right to same-sex marriage, a right to abortion, a right to this. You know, they're, they're treating the Constitution as, as if it were silly putty. Yes. And just stretching it to, to meet their needs and their demands. The Constitution is the contract by which you and I as citizens agree to be governed by our government. Yeah. See, that's, that's what that is. It says, all right, we will agree to give you the power over our lives based on these parameters. But when they begin to breach those parameters, yes. they have moved beyond what we agreed to. And there's a danger in that, and that's what we're seeing today. You know, it's interesting to me, and I get to experience this almost every Sunday at church, where the people who attend our church, it's extremely diverse uh, culturally group of people. And what is remarkable to me is meeting people who have immigrated here, many of them from mm. Asia or from India, right. who are Christians or have become Christians or they're becoming Christians. And um, I ask them when I say, where are you from? I'll ask them, what part of the world are you from? Oh, I'm from Mumbai and we've come here. And I, I kind of stir it up a little bit and I'll ask them, why did you come here? And they, looked, they look at me as, as though they're surprised because America is great because America has freedom. And I said, uh, or I would ask them, um, but I, I'm an American, I see our freedoms evaporating. They'll tell me about the greatness of America, and yet I'm not hearing that from native born Americans, mm -hmm. right? I'm not hearing that from those who have been educated in our system. In other countries, they might be getting a better education about freedom in America than Americans are in the public school system. Well, I think the, 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 the results speak for themselves. You know, America has prospered because America has been free mm -hmm. uh, under the context of ordered liberty. Yeah. And, you know, when you follow God's plan, I mean, this is like a car. If you're, if you're going down the road at 90 miles an hour and you run out of gas, you're going to still move. That's right. Our nation is still moving even though our tank may be empty. Yeah. Uh, we've got to replenish that tank with moving back to and tapping back into the source of our strength, yeah. which de Tocqueville made very That's clear, right. the, the French historian when he came here. You know, he understood what made America great. It wasn't our politics. Uh, it wasn't the politicians. It wasn't even necessarily our resources, even though we're a blessed land. It was the fact that we, we understood ordered liberty. Yeah. And when he contrasted that with the French Revolution, with the, the revolution here, the war for independence, right. big difference between the two. One has led to prosperity and greatness. The other, eh, not so much so. Yeah, in fact, uh, if I remember right, de Tocqueville mentions that the strength is, as you said, it, it wasn't in the, the, the commerce of its great seaports. He said, I didn't understand the greatness until I went and visited the churches in America and saw that the, the argument and the li liberty came from the pulpits of America. And, and in, in our next program, I want to talk about that, how the pulpits ought to be affecting mm -hmm. in America. But um, we are now reaping from a system of education that has uh, really nixed God out of the equation, right. uh, aren't we? we? We're talking about a situation here in America where um, it's godlessness. We, we, it's not cool or even right to have the Ten Commandments around. It's not right to have prayer. It's not right to have these things. You know, what, what, what really fascinates me is I, you know, I've been now in Washington for uh, almost 11 years. And, and you see these things and they're so plain. They're like the, the nose on your face, but yeah. 
literally we live increasingly in, in a time when men are blind to yeah. the truth. And the, the very government that is under, that, that is chipping away at the foundation of our religious freedom and heritage right. is actually undermining their own authority. You see, True. God grants to them authority. That's Romans right. 13 speaks to this. We are to submit ourselves to those in authority. And so, as we have experienced in the 230, almost 238 years as a nation, right. we have succeeded in having the longest running constitution because we have had a, a citizenry that understood the context in which government operated. That's right. And we ordered ourselves, according to this ordered liberty, to follow government. But as they remove the foundation of, of a religious conviction in the people, as, as George Washington in his farewell address mm. talked about the two great pillars, religion and morality, yeah. that were essential to the future of this country. Right. And then he went on to say, and let me uh, caution you that you cannot have morality in the absence of religion. That's right. And what we're seeing happen to, happening today is government is trying to remove religion from public life, and with it, they bring their own demise. Their own demise because they seek to remove religion from the public square, but internally knowing, because we've been created in the image of God, what man will do in place of God is establish himself as oh, a God. Absolutely. Well, that's why you see, when you see God must decrease so that government can increase. Exactly. And that's what we see happening today. But there is a price tag that comes with that. Yeah, I find it interesting that this current administration, and, and I'm not just talking about this current administration. This is no, it's a, a trend, trend that's been going on. A trend's been going on in America time. for a long time. But it's interesting to me right now, we're talking and we're hearing about how um, this administration wants to go after religious freedoms and even our ability to minister as as preachers or pastors or right. teachers regarding the Word of God. And I've always viewed this, and, and, and I may be a little off about this, but uh, help me out here. Uh, when, when God is allowed to be God in a culture and He's welcomed in, I just read this morning in Ezekiel, when God's not wanted, He, he removes His glory. So when He's not welcome, He'll step back. We have a system right now that is saying, God, you're not welcome, and those who represent you are not welcome. And I see government increase taxes to pay, as it were, its efforts through enforced, listen, enforced tithing. I'm not saying all taxes are bad, but I'm saying that you see uh, an attempt to decrease the church, uh, disable God's people. That affects our ability to worship our God, but boy, the government really wants us to worship it with our taxes. It's almost like a satanic replacement. Look, government doesn't like competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but look, you know, we can submit ourselves to God. And, you know, it's just like in the Old Testament when, uh, when the, the Israelites wanted a king. Oh, yeah. And they wanted to be like everybody else. Like everyone else. And so he said, all right, you can have a king. But let me just tell you what's going to happen with that. It's not going to be a good picture. He's going to eat your substance. He's going to take your kids. You, and he's going to yeah. do all these things to you. I'm only asking 10%. Yeah. Well, you know. I think most Americans would love to pay just 10% oh, could you imagine? to have a, 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 a prosperous yeah. and a stable society instead of 40 and 50% that we're paying to government today. Yeah. So it, 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 there is a crowding out. We see it in the social, the, the social services, the charitable realm. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, this has been studied by the academics that when government comes in, Charitable organizations are crowded out. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't like competition, even though it's the role of the church, according to Scripture, to care for the widow, the fatherless, and the orphan. You know, we're to take care and step in and, right. and meet those needs. But government slowly, over the last century, has crowded out the church and gets angry yeah. when the church steps back in. So now a Christian would say, um, gosh, Jack, Tony, you guys really ought to stay out of this realm of what you're talking about here, because that gets really dangerous because how many times have we heard people say, you know, I was brought up in, in a home where we didn't talk about religion or politics, and I'll counter that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there would be nothing said in my house. <laughs> exactly. Well, what else is there to talk about? Because both of those issues will completely, absolutely, absolutely. affect your life. Absolutely. And so uh, you can't have it uh, either or. It's both, really. And so in, in our culture, you know, you look at what's going on, and um, people are going to have to choose sides. And, and you could feel it in America. There is sides are being chosen now, if you think about it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think if it was a Kierkegaard who said, uh, maybe I got the name wrong, that it's, there's not one square inch of this place that does not scream out, Jesus is Lord. Wow. And, you know, as a Christian, when we look at the fact that 
Well, if Jesus is Lord of our lives, mm. He's not just Lord of one compartment. He's Lord of everything. And, and He is Lord over all. And that means that we must take our faith into the workplace. And that's really what's at, at, at um, in the crosshairs right now. We've heard a lot about the Hobby Lobby case, right. the, the HHS mandate where mm -hmm. the government is saying, I don't care what your religious beliefs are, you are going to have to fund uh, these uh, drugs that could uh, potentially end the life of an unborn child. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you believe, doesn't matter what your faith, if you're in business, you leave your religious faith at the door. Yeah. Same thing we saw recently in Arizona w with uh, uh, the Religious Freedom Restoration right. Act, where they said, you know what, you cannot take your faith. Or the Lane Photography in New Mexico, same thing. Yeah. We're seeing that crop up around the country. As Christians, this is fundamental, and as Americans, it's a fundamental attack on our first freedom. Yeah. We must, and I'm gonna emphasize that, yeah. must take our faith into the marketplace. We must take our faith into education. We must take our faith into our political engagement. We must take our faith everywhere, or else Jesus is not the Lord of our lives. Now, Tony, we're sitting in a state right now in California here where um, I'm both discouraged and encouraged. If I'm discouraged when I see how the halls of power have been abandoned to an absolute uh, alien thinking process and decision-making process. It's a shocker. The decisions, I don't need to tell anybody how insane they are coming out of the state. And then you look around at the magnitude of churches that are in California, tremendous churches. Yeah huge, not that that makes them right, but so many churches and so many large churches where the Bible's being taught. I mean, this is a messed up state, but the encouraging part is, and we've seen this in recent battles that we've uh, gone through culturally here, where the church seems to be waking up. I, I'm encouraged because the church seems to be wanting to get engaged now. In fact, in many cases, it's been the church that has really got the pastor's attention to get engaged. As I look around, and you being from Washington, D.C., I don't see the answer coming from, at least quickly, from the political <laughs> no, sides. No, look, what we're facing, and I say this all the time, yeah, I know you've heard me say this, Pastor Jack, but our greatest problem in America is not political. Yeah. And we're not going to fix it by changing the jerseys on those who are in Washington, mm. D.C. At its heart, what we're facing in America is a spiritual crisis. It's not a political crisis. Yeah. We've lost our way spiritually. And that is why I spend so much time yeah. working with pastors, because if we're going to find our way out of this, it's going to have to come from the oh, pulpit and pastors saying, thus saith the Lord. That's you know, right. I'm tired of pastors being politically correct. Right. You know, wow. we don't want to offend anyone. Look, the word of God is offend. Jesus said, right. you know, I didn't, I, I came here and I'm offensive. He said, people hated me. They're going to hate you. Yeah. Don't be surprised by that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, look, we're not here simply to get people to pat us on the back. Right. Right. We're here to deliver a message of truth, deliver it in love, right. as Ephesians 4 says, but deliver it nonetheless. And if, if the church shrinks back from addressing the greatest needs of our day, who'll do it? I mean, I hear from politicians, I actually had a politician tell me this, and I agree with him. Why do pastors and Christians and churches expect me to talk on TV about things that pastors won't preach Ooh. about in the pulpit. Oh, excellent. That is strong, and that is true. So you think of this, where we have got some of the bravest people, and I know a lot of Christians are not going to want to hear this. We've got some of the bravest people through you. I've met a lot of them who are in politics. They're in office. They love the Lord. They are in a battle that most Christians have no idea is being waged. It's a, it's a spiritual battle. It's, I well, mean, it's, I mean, the, 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 you know, in Ephesians, we were talking about this yeah. earlier today, Ephesians chapter 6, where Paul, writing from jail, yes. gives instructions to the, 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 this new band of Gentile believers about how to operate in a pagan, hostile, anti-Christian culture. Right. And he concludes with some very politically incorrect language. He said, you're in a battle. Yeah. Put on the whole armor of God that yes. you may be able to stand against the devices of the devil. Right. And, and he portrays this great battle that's taking a place and he goes through each piece of the armor that we're to put on. We are in a spiritual battle. It's very clear it's not people. 
It's principalities, right. it's powers, it's the rulers of the darkness of this age, it's spiritual hosts of wickedness yeah. in heavenly places. Right. That's what we're up against. These men and women who are believers in Washington, D.C., they feel this, they oh, see yeah. it, they deal with it. It's the reason we're instructed to pray for those in That's authority right. because they are battling right in the on. heavenlies. Right on. So we look around, what's the Christian to do? They see a culture that is coming against them uh, and it's close now. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, after a Sunday sermon, a family came up, they were visiting the church, and uh, they had four or five children, young family. Uh, and they said to me, Pastor Jack, we were, uh, we're happy to be here today. We've heard about the church and all, but we were really offended. And I said, how so? And they said, well, before you even got into your message, you brought a soldier up. And you, had, you put your hands on him and you prayed and you had us stand and pray and you're sending him off to battle. And, and we as Christians are not to do battle. And I said, well, I'm not quite sure where you get that. Well, he's going to go, I would assume he's going to go off and kill someone. And I said, well, listen, first of all, we should be praying that the Prince of Peace returns, Jesus, so Absolutely. there would be no more wars. But in all actuality, um, wars will take place. The Bible talks about wars. It's going to happen. But to divorce yourself from the culture of that reality will not remove the wars. And we're seeing wars in the world. James makes it very clear. Where do these things come from? Well, they first of all come from the spiritual side of man. Absolutely. Things manifested in the material world only do so first after there's a spiritual invisible agenda. I'm glad that was you and not me, brother. I'd, I'd roll up my shirt, and shirt sleeve and show my tattoo. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the yeah. idea that we're not to pray for our men and women in the military yeah. and, and pray God's blessing and provision upon them when we enjoy the freedom that we do yeah. because men and women have been willing to lay down their lives That's for right. these freedoms. Look, we live in a fallen world. Yeah. Would we, do we long for the day when there is no war? Absolutely. Of but course. it's when the Prince of Peace comes and we have the final conflict right. that deals with this once and for all. But until then, we live in a fallen world. Right. And, and we do wrestle with an enemy. It's yeah. not flesh and blood. It is a spiritual enemy. And if we stick our head in the sand, oh, yeah. it's no wonder that we'll get run over yeah. by the culture, which is what we see happening in a lot of the churches today. The good thing about that conversation that I, I had with them is this is how it ended. I said, so I take it that we're not to get involved in, in those areas to defend our freedoms. And they said, yes, that's correct. We're not to get involved. And I said, you know, right now, uh, and it was at the time of this uh, message that the invasion of the Ukraine was taking place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, uh, what do you think about that? This was a God moment because uh, the young mother said, oh, I'm Russian. And I said, well, this, then, this is amazing because at what point uh, does it get our attention that Russia invaded the Ukraine? Ah, oh, let's forget about it. It's just the Ukraine. Well, at what point if Russia invades London? Oh, it's okay. It, it's just London. And I'm hypothetically putting this out Did there. I'm being sarcastic. Did you get to Southern California? Well, I said, now it's Canada. We just heard that Russia invaded Canada, but it's just the Canadians. Now it's Minnesota. Now it's Northern California, and well, that's okay still. Now it's your county, and now, sir, and I asked the young man, I said, now the enemy is across the street looking at your house. What do you do? And the light came on. You know what he said? He said, we walked in here pacifists today, but I just realized the truth. I would have to defend my family. And I said, listen, never more so is that true than regarding spiritual issues that are manifested in this culture. Tony, I'm gonna to ask you to stay over and we'll do uh, another uh, program to this, but in, uh, in, in closing words, when people think of Washington, D.C., when they, they think of you, uh, the Family Research Council, what's going on there, um, pastors or Christians have a tendency to, to write you guys off as, well, that's just some sort of a wing of some political party. Uh, but I know you. I've known you for years. And FRC is not a puppet of any party. And I think that's why I love being with you and with the FRC. But what would you say to Christians who see their culture dying in front of them and they feel helpless? What can they do? Well, 
We've been there for 30 years in Washington, D.C., and as you said, there's no strings on us other than yeah. we answer to God. Amen. And uh, we are unapologetically Christian in, our, in, in what we do. We work to uphold uh, policy as it relates to families from a Christian perspective. What we need to do as Christians is live out our faith each and every day Amen. right where God has placed us. This is Nehemiah when he rebuilt the walls. He did it family by family. Hallelujah. That's how we rebuild the nation. Yeah, amen. Well, listen, Tony, we're going to ask you to stay over. In the next program, we'll dive back into it. All right, very All right. good. God bless you, man. Politics and Faith. Jack Hibbs, in his five-part DVD series, will help us understand how we as Christians should view the subject of politics in the light of our faith. What are the core issues that should define our worldview? Our support of Israel, protecting the unborn, traditional marriage. It's time to think these things through. Christians have long understood it's not enough to stand on the sidelines, leaving the direction of this great nation to those who would lead it astray. Our heritage demands that we be involved. Order the DVD set, Politics and Faith. For a gift of any amount to the ongoing ministry of Real Life, we'll send you this DVD set for free. Go online to reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346 or write P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who is searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life each month with a gift of your choosing. In return, our gift to you for becoming a Real Life partner, we'd like to send you this Worldview DVD. It's titled, What You Believe Defines You. Call now. 1-877-777-2346. That's 877-777-2346. Or by mail, P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Or simply go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.